And uh, our the final part of my talk is uh, the representation of AFM images. Uh, why is it, is it so important? Because even well-processed data, uh, data which is processed in the right way, sometimes uh, when it is presented in the wrong way, uh, finally you don't get your aim. You don't uh, uh, provide the information to, this, uh, to the scientific society. Uh, you, you don't re represent your result. And uh, there are two like, our main overall principles uh, we should be used here. Uh, first, of course, image should be informative. That means that uh, you should represent your image in the way when the most of uh, the details uh, you want to highlight should be seen. And the second, uh, that uh, the image should be not far from reality. Later I'll explain what does it mean. Uh, so, again, uh, this annoying example with a, a big particle and uh, uh, how, uh, as I mentioned previously, uh, why this happens, uh, why this image is not uh, uh, informative, this happens because this big particle takes most of the part of the uh, coloration gradient. So, there are several ways how to overcome this. The first way is to use uh, to change the minimum and maximum of this uh, uh, of our uh, palette. So that that means that uh, if we press this button in our toolbar, we can change the uh, change the uh, color which corresponds to uh, color position which corresponds to the maximums, and uh, all the uh, all the uh, pixels. Which uh, uh, which are higher than 27.8 nanometers will be uh, white. They will they will not give us any information. But uh, uh, at the same time, the whole gradient of the palette will go to the pixels which have some meaning. Another way is to use uh, the automatic button, uh, which automatically cuts off. Uh, the dedicated uh, percentage from the histogram of the image. So pixels which are not uh, in the main part of the histogram are not colorized. And uh, this uh, uh, percentage can be, uh, uh, can be adjusted in settings. And uh, the, the way which I like mo uh, mostly is the so-called nonlinear tool. Uh, when, when we can uh, adjust our, histor our histogram and our coloration uh, non-linearly. And now I will uh, show some demonstration uh, how to do it in a live way uh, using our, our image analysis. So, uh, we have the image. And uh, uh, we don't see much from this. And I, too, and I choose the, uh, uh, the nonlinear palette tool. And you can see that uh, we are getting the uh, distribution of the color uh, channels over the uh, histogram bin. And uh, at the same time, you can use the histogram tool which will show us the histogram distribution and we'll see that the most information from our image is laying in the area of uh, the dark uh, colors. So, I'll switch it once again and uh, with control button pressed on, I can add some new markers to our, uh, to our histogram, uh, to our palette. And I can change this palette non-linearly. And thus, I can, uh, uh, I can do the highlighting of, our, of, our, uh, of my interest without cutting off any of the uh, pixels from the image. So, next, the 3D. As we have the uh, matrix uh, of X and Ys, which uh, have uh, uh, the value in each uh, cell, we can represent this as some uh, uh, the 3D image. Uh, unfortunately, in many cases I saw in papers, I don't know why, but people try to stretch 3D image in a Z direction. So like in this example. And uh, instead of seeing the nice uh, distribution of uh, nanoparticles over the surface, uh, the quantum dots in this case, 
I see some uh, spikes, spiky image which doesn't doesn't give me any information about this. So please, uh, please don't do this. <laughs> and uh, uh, I will, the next example, I will show uh, how to do the three D processing. I think I'll make a big, bigger image. So if I press 3D uh, tab here, I will see that, okay, uh, uh, there is some nice uh, image of uh, blood uh, cells uh, and I can rotate them by dragging this image. I can uh, change uh, the, uh, the view, the perspective view. I can change the position of the uh, of the light I don't do like this like in previous example I see that like okay uh, this uh, this uh, this image uh, looks really close to the uh, to, to, to the true but uh, uh, what uh, what else uh, what which uh, other options uh, I have here uh, first of all, I can ch change the palette. Uh, I can change the palette from the preset palettes here, or I can change the palette using a palette uh, editor tool. So to run the palette editor tool, I can go to tools, choose palette edit, and I get uh, the this tool uh, window. In this tool window, I have uh, what I, what I see here. I see the preview of the scan. I see the histogram of the scan, I see the channels, and actually the palette. So uh, here on this scan, I see that uh, there are two levels of, uh, 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 of brightness. So I can uh, highlight them by pressing the uh, uh, histogram stripe, uh, the, the, uh, the palette uh, stripe, and I'm getting two markers, and if I press to uh, to the circle of the marker, I can ch choose the uh, the uh, any color I like. So these are actually uh, the blood cells of poor mouse on the glass. So let's so the first spike uh, means that uh, this is the glass, and okay, glass should be should look like like light light gray, like transparent. Okay, and blood, blood is, I think, red. I think all animals have red blood. And uh, I can adjust the position of, the, uh, of each marker. And when I apply, uh, yes, uh, I, I, I didn't apply. Uh, so once again, I said, Set the glass, set the blood, and uh, changing changing the parameter, I can uh, look in the live mode how my image is, is being changed. And now I see that, uh, well, image looks pretty nice. And uh, I can go, uh, the, uh, so, so the, this is how the 3, 3D imaging can be processed. And uh, I, uh, I think that some of you will say, okay, this is uh, just coloration, uh, this is uh, uh, something with, uh, with, uh, which doesn't deal with the science, but uh, I read several papers uh, recently published uh, about the perception in science. They were published uh, in a communication uh, between uh, physicists and uh, psychologists. And uh, all these papers say that uh, the uh, way how the image is, is presented, uh, it uh, involves the perception of this image and the perception of final scientific result. And as, a, as an example, you can see, well, so let's compare two, uh, two, uh, two uh, papers published in the same journal, uh, example papers, so these are fake fake papers, like one of them looks nice, here we see the image and some data for coming from this, some text, and uh, from the right side. 
uh, every year people publish tens of thousands of papers. And uh, when someone is uh, looking uh, through journal and uh, w w the bigger chance that he will stop at the page with a, a nice looking image. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's not uh, like not the art, that's the psychological behavior of, of people. And so what I want to say that uh, uh, the images, first of all, should be uh, treated uh, in the right way and uh, treat it in the way that uh, they are they will be well percepted ah one more one more example uh about 3d uh in our new uh, in our new software we can make the 3d overlay and uh how it works so we have two scans those are fluorinated alkanes the topography and the surface potential of both of the same uh, area and uh, you can imagine that uh, uh, this uh, feature is not seen in surface uh, potential, why you can read in our application notes. Uh, but here I want to say uh, how to highlight this fact. So I go to the 3D and if, if I press texture button, I will get the list of all my scans here. And if I choose, choose the texture, which corresponds to this scan and uh, press uh, press select i will see the some property in this case this is kpfm map surface potential map which is overlaid over the uh, 3d image so the, this is uh, and uh, in this uh, in this view we see we see that uh, this feature doesn't have any uh, dipole moment any surface potential this is one of the ways how to uh, explain uh, many things in one, just one mini image.